Hi, my name is Danny, and thank you for subscribing to DDTSB. Although our software is super easy to use, in this video, I'm gonna take you through the program, share some tips and tricks to make sure you get the best results possible. We always use the program from left to right, so we always start in the top left corner by selecting the vehicle we're working on. Selecting the vehicle we're working on can be done in four different ways. Now the first and easiest way is entering the license plate number. This can be done for 13 different countries. We can also manually select a vehicle by entering make, model, year and engine code. There's also a third option and that's by entering the VIN number. But I told you there is a fourth way. Once you have selected a vehicle, that selected vehicle will show up in the top right corner of your screen. Now, if you're working on multiple vehicles at the same time, click on the selected vehicle and you'll see a drop-down menu. In the drop-down menu, you can easily switch between different vehicles without having to go through the lengthy process of entering a VIN number or a license plate number. Easy, right? Once you have selected a vehicle, that vehicle will show up in the top right corner of your screen. The program will also give you an overview with details of the selected vehicle. Go through the details to make sure the selected vehicle matches the car you're working on. Now that we have selected the right vehicle, we can move on to the next tab. We can now go from car selection to bulletins. Now let's go and find a bulletin. There are multiple ways to find a bulletin. The easiest way is by entering a fault code. So let's enter a pretty popular fault code for this model in the search bar. Let's enter the P20E8. You can see that immediately the system comes up with multiple bulletins. This is because this fault code can have multiple causes on this model. Now take a look at the headlines of the bulletins. We try to include as much information as possible and as much symptoms as possible. Now always select the bulletin that matches your symptoms as closely as possible. We just found a bulletin using a fault code. All the bulletins that were suggested contained the fault code P20E8. Now a lot of people think that the system can only be used for electrical issues when you have a fault code. Now this is absolutely not true. Sometimes you have a symptom, let's say a water leak, but you don't have a fault code. Now if that water leak is a common issue on the vehicle you have selected, we probably have a bulletin for it. Now let's imagine we're diagnosing an AdBlue system, but we don't have any fault codes. In this case we can use the search bar. When we enter AdBlue, the system will show all the AdBlue related bulletins we have got for this specific model. Now sometimes it also includes crucial information, in this case the internals of the AdBlue tank. Very helpful information that can help you diagnose the issue. I've showed you how to find a bulletin using a fault code and how to find a bulletin using the search bar. But we can also find a bulletin using the pre-selected categories. Now let's select a different vehicle. Let's select an Audi e-tron. Now imagine this car comes into your shop for service, but it's actually the first time you're servicing this particular model, so you're not very familiar with it. In this instance, we're going to select the category maintenance. In this category, we show you all the things that are important to know when servicing this particular model. Let's open the first bulletin. In the first bulletin, we tell you about the drip container or drip cartridge. When the electric motor leaks coolant, it leaks into this container. Now a little leak is quite normal, but when there is a lot of coolant in that reservoir, this might indicate a problem with the electric motor, something you need to know when servicing this vehicle. Now another thing you need to know is that this cartridge needs to be changed every 30,000 kilometers or every two years. We can also use a pre-selected symptom. Let's select air suspension faulty. In this case, the bulletins are narrowed down to just the bulletins that are air suspension related. When you select show all, the system will show you all the bulletins we have for this specific model. We divided them into three categories, being critical bulletins, specific bulletins, and general bulletins. 
The critical bulletins are the most important, and that's why we place them at the top. These are the bulletins we think you should know about before even working on the vehicle, because when ignored, this can lead to damage or even dangerous situations. The specific bulletins are the bulletins that will help you diagnose and fix common issues on this specific vehicle. Finally, we've got general bulletins. The general bulletins are bulletins containing general information on systems fitted to the car, like Linbus, a smart alternator, or air suspension systems, that still might contain very useful information to understand the system and to help you diagnose it. We can also find the bulletin directly by entering the bulletin's number. Imagine you're diagnosing a fault and a colleague or our help desk tells you, we've seen this before, take a look at bulletin 6421. We can now enter this number to find that bulletin directly. It sometimes happens when you enter a fault code that the system will tell you there is no direct match between the selected vehicle and the fault code you have entered. But it did find a match on that fault code on a different model or even a different brand. You can still decide to open these bulletins because you can use them for inspiration. A lot of times different manufacturers or different models use similar systems or even the same supplier and there might still be very useful information inside the bulletin to help you diagnose your issue. Behind every bulletin you will find a number of dots. The more dots, the more popular the bulletin. Statistically speaking, a bulletin with multiple dots is more likely to solve the issue you're working on. Behind some of the bulletins you will find a play button. Attached to this play button can be an audio or a video file containing a video or a sound. We all know that a picture or a video or a sound can tell more than a thousand words. That's why sometimes we will add one of these files to clarify the symptom or the issue you're working on. Let's take a closer look at one of our bulletins. We will never tell you to simply replace a part. We will just tell you that from statistics and experience, we know what the most likely cause could be. Now in the bulletin, we try to add as much information as possible so you can test the component before condemning it, if this is possible. We also try to add as many pictures as possible because we know technicians are visual learners. We know you don't like to read, but if there's anything highlighted in red, I highly recommend reading it because this information can be extra important. We always try to improve our product. That's why at the bottom of each bulletin, you'll find a feedback section. You can give us a thumbs up if you think the bulletin was helpful and it helped you solve the issue you're working on, but you can also give us a thumbs down if you think the bulletin can be improved or something is missing. If you do give us a thumbs down, then please select the feedback button and tell us what you think is missing or what can be improved. Now remember, we take this very seriously. Monthly, we update just as many old TSBs as we create new ones. This way, over time, the bulletins keep getting better and better, even the old ones. Sometimes when you have selected a bulletin, the system knows that there are other bulletins available that hold very relevant information for the issue you are trying to solve. In those cases, we will link those bulletins to the bottom of the bulletin you have just selected. We highly recommend that you also read these bulletins before you continue your troubleshooting. At the bottom of the bulletin, you can change the bulletin to six different languages, but five of them are Google Translated. If there's anything off or you think something is lost in translation, we always recommend to take a look at the original English version. Now that we have covered the bulletin section, let's move over to the next section and that's the fault code section. That is one thing you have to keep in mind and which is very important. Every time you move from the bulletin section to the fault code section, you are no longer looking for the selected vehicle. You are now searching the entire database. So if you enter a fault code in the fault code section, a bulletin might come up, but it might not be relevant at all for the vehicle you're working on. So the fault code section is not the recommended section to be looking for bulletins. This should be done in the bulletin section. Fault codes in the fault code sections can be used for inspiration though. Now, where is the fault code section intended for? The fault code section is intended to show you the right fault code with the right description as intended by the manufacturer. 
Now, why is this important? Now, let me show you. Let's enter a fault code, the P0555, and let's select Mercedes. On the same car, this fault code can mean something totally different depending on the year or even the month or the control unit that has been fitted. Now we know from experience not all scan to manufacturers always keep up with all these changes. So they might show you the wrong description or no description at all. In these cases, they might show you manufacturer specific fault code just because they are not sure. Now if you're in doubt, you can look at this database to make sure you are chasing the right fault code. And yes, sometimes when you enter a fault code, a bulletin does show up in blue, but it might not have anything to do with the car you have selected. In this cases, these can be used for inspiration only. Let's move on to the next section, and that's the hotline section. Now, although the hotline is available to all members of DDTSB, it is not included in your subscription. And that's because not everybody uses the hotline, so it wouldn't be fair to charge everybody for the cost of our hotline. Now, when you select this service, the system will show you this is a paid service. Now, you don't have to use it, but it's quite nice to know that if you need a little extra help, we are there to assist you. Our help desk is one of the biggest in Europe, and we have specialists for almost every brand. Last year, our hotline helped you guys solve over 54,000 cases. Now, that's a lot of data. Now, all the knowledge we have gained from these cases flows right back into the bulletins because our hotline team and our team that writes the bulletins work very closely together so we can all benefit. When you create a new hotline case, besides asking your question, try to upload as much details as possible. So, if you got an oscilloscope waveform, a scan to report, or even photos that might help, please include them so the specialist can help you as efficient as possible. Our help desk system looks like a chat where you can ask questions and get answers back and forth. Now, this isn't always real time because our specialist is probably working on multiple cases at the same time, but he will answer your question as soon as possible. Now, as soon as he has answered your hotline question, you will get a notification. All your hotline cases are stored in the hotline history. So in case you get a comeback a month later, you can always revisit that hotline case to refresh your memory. Not all hotline cases are being charged. When you go to history, behind each case there is either a banknote or a banknote with a cross through it. If you see a banknote, it was a paid service. This is usually car technical questions or troubleshooting assistance. When there is a banknote with a cross, the service was free. This is usually when you need IT help with technical difficulties with the program, a question about the program, or a question about a bulletin. We also use the help desk for tips we can give to others. If you get an idea for a new bulletin, you can upload that material through our help desk. We will review it, and if it actually leads to the creation of a new bulletin, we will name you as the source. If you wish, we can also put a link to your business inside the bulletin and hopefully that can help you grow your business. Of course, tips we can give to others is free of charge. When you select hotline info, you can take a look at our opening hours, but you can also read our terms and conditions. I really recommend you read our terms. In our terms, you can also find more information about the cost of a hotline case. The next section is called formulas. In this section, you will find helpful tools that can help you in your day-to-day -day diagnostic jobs. For instance, if you're looking at a mass airflow reading and you're reading four grams per second and you think, is this a normal reading? There is a mass airflow calculator that can help you determine if that reading makes any sense. DTSB is more than a database of known faults and fixes. It can also be regarded as an educational program. Now, our main goal is for you to be able to diagnose and fix the vehicle you're working on, regardless if the fault you're working on is a common fault or not. Sometimes we don't have a bulletin available, and in that case you need to diagnose the vehicle yourself. To be able to do that, you need system knowledge, and this is where the measuring methods come in. The measuring methods section can be considered a self-study program. It contains hundreds of subjects, components, and systems easily explained by technicians for technicians. If you want to know how an O2 sensor works, 
we got you covered. If you want to know how CAN bus works or how to measure it, we got you covered. But when you look at the future, high voltage components, batteries, heat pumps, we got you covered. There's hundreds of hours of self-study material included, and all this priceless information is all included in your DDTSB subscription. We've now come to the final section, and that's the educational section. When we get a lot of questions on a certain subject in our help desk, or when we think we're going to get a lot of questions on a subject in the future, we can decide to create a training video. These training videos can be found here and are exclusive to DDTSB and can't be found anywhere else. You've now come to the end of this DDTSB introduction video. After watching this video, you should be able to get the best results out of the program. If despite this video, you still got questions about how to use the program, feel free to ask them in our help desk section. Of course, this is free of charge.